Yeah, the UIL state championships also happened, happened in December. It feels like they happened so long ago, yeah. but uh, it was only realistically a couple weeks ago. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look back at some of those scores. Some of them surprising, some of them not. Um, I put these in order of the time that the actual game started. Um, did not put them from smallest to largest. I put them... Um, because, of course, Division One went first this year. So, of course, in 1A Division One, Gordon takes home the crown there over Westbrook 70-20, to 20, which is, I think, shocked a lot of people because a lot of people, especially here, picked Westbrook to win, to go back-to-back. -back. Yeah, that Gordon defense, I mean, we talked about that being the best, like, Kept statistically. Statistically, it's the best six-man defense of all time. I mean, coming into that game, they were averaging only allowing eight points per game, and that's in six-man football. So we knew the defense was good. I just didn't know if the Gordon offense could keep up mm -hmm. with the Westbrook offense. But, man, that defense was all that they needed. I mean, they just absolutely torched them. It was, it was never close. No. I bet you that is probably the lowest scoring game that Westbrook had – performed all season oh yeah absolutely um so super super impressive showing by the Gordon defense and of course uh Riley and Stryker Reed were incredible on the mm -hmm. offensive side of the ball um able to put up 70 points I mean that is that's insane um and that game of course was 45 to two yes. um in the third quarter yeah both so both six men both six men games were actually down there of course Benjamin taking home the crown for 1A division two over Oglesby this one not so much a surprise no um, but at least it was close for a while I mean this one was close until yeah. about halfway through the second quarter yeah I think so too um Oglesby Kyler Fawcett played incredible mm -hmm. um he's their standout guy there um and what we really talked about up in the booth is that of course Grayson Rigdon is the star for Benjamin. Oh, yeah. He had seven touchdowns in that game, making it, I think, 17 in total for state championship games. Because, of course, he won last year at Benjamin and then won at Strawn mm -hmm. um, there before. So seventeen, he has scored 17 touchdowns <laughs> alone in state championship games. That's wild. And what then kind of a stat a is that? Two-time MVP at Strawn. Yes. He was the singular one and the singular one. So in his junior year, he is a four-time state MVP. Literally insane. Yeah. Um, but really, Kyler Fawcett, I felt like, was the only guy all season that could really go toe-to-toe -to -toe yeah. with no, Grayson he did. Rigdon. He did. He could, and that's why it was close for a little while. It yeah. wasn't until the second half that Benjamin really turned on the Jets, which, I mean, is better than anybody else has done against him all year long. Fawcett was fantastic. He, yes. Especially in that first quarter. Those two going at each other was really, really fun. Yes. Um, and then to cap the night off for 2A Division One, Timpson absolutely bludgering Toller 49 yeah. to seven to take home their first state title. And of course, yes, the story here is Terry Bussey, mm -hmm. the athlete committed to Texas A&M, Mr. Texas football last year, former Mr. Texas football. But man, how about that defense? Yeah. How about that defense holding Toller's high powered and massive, just physically big defense, especially up front mm -hmm. to Seven points. Yeah, I mean, we talked so much going Offense, into that game about Toller with Peyton Brown on the outside, like uh, Isaiah Blessing. Isaac, Isaac Blessing. Isaac their Blessing, quarterback, their quarterback. Yeah. Um, they're, they're just threats. You know, there was really big body, and we didn't know if Timpson was going to be big enough in the defense to be mm -hmm. able to stop him. Uh, if, yes, that's correct. I said that the right way. Yes, I had to stop yes. and think about that for a second. Um, but it was it was all Timpson. Yes. All Timpson the entire time. They locked down Peyton Brown. I mean, he mm -hmm. barely had any productivity that entire game. Yeah, well, and I, you can say the same thing for Isaac Blessing, too. I mean, they made him look so uncomfortable in the pocket. Mm -hmm. They held him to 71 passing yards all night long, yep. which is just impressive because that guy that guy can fling it. I mean, we saw it against when they played Marlin. Mm -hmm. Um but, yeah, very, very impressive showing by Terry Bussey in the Timpson Bears. They take home their first title. Well, and it was cool, too. History. I mean, it was just so cool to see Terry cap off a career That's like that. We've been talking about him. It was supposed him. to end like that. Yeah, you know? we've been talking about him for so long. Will they finally do it? Will he finally get it done? Like, his, his last game as a Bear to go out on top, finally, mm -hmm. with that state championship. That was, especially if, if y'all have read Carter's story about, like, Terry's life and all that he's been through, yeah. that, makes it, that makes it even that much cooler. Right heard nothing but great things about that no. kid and we're excited to watch him absolutely 
And then starting off the day on Thursday, it was the 2A Division II state championship. All No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, correct. 2A Division II state championship. Albany goes back to back, taking down the Mart Panthers 28 to 10. And I don't know how you felt about this game, but I felt like the real turning point to me, I, I felt like Albany was pretty much in con- full control of this game the entire time. Mm-hmm. They knew what they were doing. They had this, this Mart team on lock. But I felt like the turning point to me was in the first half, there was about three minutes left in the second quarter, Mart had the ball. They were down seven to three and Mart's quarterback lost control. Albany recovered. And then they scored two plays later. Mm-hmm. That to me felt like a vibe turning yeah. point because Mart came back in the second half at one point and they, they brought it to, they brought it a little bit closer. Mm-hmm. I don't remember exactly what the score was, but I think they brought it within 10 or seven. Yeah. I think it might've been 17, 10, but still it just felt at that point that Albany yeah, Mart control. had Mart had a couple of key player. This takes nothing away from Albany. Let me preface that yes. first. Mart had a couple of their skill players that had been battling a couple of different injuries, injuries and yes. stuff. So I wondered when that was said that they were they had some injuries. I was like, man, that plays so bad in their favor. Other than just the obvious of having your guys be injured. Mm-hmm. Because Albany is so big and so physical. And that's Mm -hmm. exactly how they won this game last year, which was a lot more of a surprise. But, I mean, you watch them walk out onto the field, and it's like, oh. Those are big boys. Those are big boys. They're much bigger than Mart up front. And that's exactly what they did such a good job of doing. One was uh, just getting in the backfield and disrupting disrupting the pass. They couldn't get anything, and then they They weren't going to— They made them so uncomfortable. Yeah, their linebackers are incredible. So it's like you're not going to be able to bust a whole lot of runs around them either on the edge. So Albany just straight up out-physicaled Mart that entire game. And I think that that's why, even though it's closer than a lot of these scores on here, it never felt like a close game because it looked like bully ball from Albany. Right, right. And of course, I think running back Adam Hill looked fantastic, offensive MVP. But I thought Chip Chambers, too, their quarterback, Mm -hmm. really showed out. And I feel like you talk so much about Adam Hill, and the the Texas Tech commit down there in, uh, in Albany. But you don't talk much enough about the quarterback. Yep. But he did so well, and he was such an impressive showing leading that team to their second straight title for Which, by the way, the Denny Faith proved us right. He sure did. we were on Good the point. bandwagon last year. I said, if Denny Faith doesn't retire, he thinks that they're going back-to-back. Because he finally he did, grabs yes. one after 36 years at that point. He finally gets his state title. Like, he should have ridden off into the sun. Yeah. But it was like, he's, he's like, coming nah, back for a 37th know. year. He knows this team can do it. Yes. Like, that's the most clear sign ever. Why do you think Reggie Samples is still coaching? Right. Exactly. <laughs> he should have left after he the knows last that one. This but team he knew is that scary. they could, Spoiler alert. He knew that they were yeah. going to go back to back or had a really darn good shot to. Uh-huh. Like, good don't, point. Don't focus on what they say. Focus on what they do. <laughs> yes, yes, you're you're so right there. That's funny. I do remember you saying that last year, and I was like, "That's, that's like if he comes back, you know? then Albany's going back to back." Yeah. Like, there's zero doubt in my mind. No. Yeah, and then everybody picked him. We were like, "Yep, we yep. got that." <laughs> in the three A Division One state championship, probably Banger. not probably definitely the first good game of the entire week. Malakoff takes the cake. 14-7. Um, I think Ish is the only one that picked Malakoff to win this game. So We don't shout I guess, him out on this I guess show. shout out to him. Um, but the Tigers, they win their first state title in program history. And I think the question that we had that we definitely talked about on our state semifinal preview is that is Malakoff going to be able to figure out and contain this difficult slot T offense mm-hmm. that Franklin loves to run? And yeah, they held him to seven points, which is by far the most amount of the least amount of points that Franklin has scored this entire season by like three or four scores. Yeah, they did I so mean, good. They good did Lord. such, and it's funny because going into that game, Malakoff's defense, their strength was always their defensive back. Right. Mike Jones, the quarterback, is back there at an mm-hmm. unbelievable defensive back, and so it was. How well was the line going to play? And they just absolutely shut down Jaden Jackson. They shut down anything, and they made Franklin so uncomfortable that Franklin tried throwing, throwing the, the ball, ball. <laughs> in crucial moments. Now, they had opened up their slot T a little bit more this year as, as a whole, but I was shocked. That's not like the how they call, like to play. Yeah. The play call at the end of the game when they were going to have, they got the first down and they tried to throw, throw it on first down. Mm-hmm. I was shocked 
by that play call because mm-hmm. I was like, what are you doing? You don't have time for three more throwing plays. No. Get, like, get one good run, spike the ball, and then maybe try to throw. I, I was shocked by that. But that takes nothing away from the fact that Malakoff played an unbelievable game. And yes. something that's so cool about that, I felt like going into that game, we talked so much about uh, – Mark Fannin from Franklin, this is his fourth year as a head coach, and he's made it to the state championships every Every single single year. year. On the other side of that, what a cool moment for Jamie Driscoll and their squad. Yes. They had the heartbreaking loss to Grandview in 2018. Then Jamie Driscoll, I don't know if you know this, he played for a state championship in high school. and Did he really? So he played for one, lost, coached for one, lost, and, now and he it's like, finally and he, now he finally got gets it. The taste and of it. If you go back and look at what Malakoff was before he got there, they hadn't been to the playoffs since like 2002 or so. Wow. And now he's never missed the playoffs. Like, I mean, he has truly turned that program around. And to see someone like Mark Fannin who walks in and goes to the state mm-hmm. championship every single year, which is just mind boggling in and of itself, right. to then see someone that's been to this stage so many times and never able to get it done that crazy it was awesome I feel like we should have had a an inkling that Malakoff was was gonna play Franklin tough because I felt like Franklin and Brock yes were very stylistically they're mm-hmm. very similar they're both very big and very physical and Malakoff handled Brock pretty easily yes not, not easily but they they took care of Brock yes um in the state semifinal and so I felt like maybe we should have seen this coming a little bit more because I think a lot of us did write off mm-hmm. Malakoff just playoff pedigree right because Franklin is used to being here they yeah. know how to win Mark Fannin like you said is an unbelievable coach, coach. maybe we should have put more stock obviously we should have put more stock, stock into, Malakoff. into Malakoff yep. after seeing them you know bully Brock mm-hmm. <laughs> a team that's very similar to Franklin but congratulations to the Tigers and coach Triscoll there um their first state title pro- in program history and then to round out that day, the Thursday, 3A Division 2, Gunner. This one was also sneaky good, too. It Gunner was, takes yeah. care of Tidehaven, 30-14. to 14. This was close at the half. At the like, half, it was close. very close. I, Tidehaven might have been leading at the half. It Were was. They? No, I looked this they up. They scored right before the half. I do know that. Yes. I can't remember exactly what the score was at the half, but it was like a, I mean, it was maybe like a one score, even less yes. than that. But man, I think that like, I think we were a little bit nervous. I would say that, but I don't think anybody wrote off Gunner. I, I figured no. that Gunner was going to do Gunner things with Walker Overman and that's exactly what they did in the second half. They rattled yep. off like two more touchdowns, mm-hmm. to, and then they shut out Tidehaven. And this yeah. because those t- those both of those scores from Tidehaven came from their running back Joseph Dodds, the Baylor yes. commit. He's he's phenomenal by yes, the way. He's, he's great. huge, phenomenal. That was pretty much all that Tidehaven had to offer. And Gunner figured out how to stop them in the second half. They came out and they rattled off two straight touchdowns. To win the game. Right. Well, and the, and that was just the biggest question. Gunner hadn't played a fourth quarter. Right. All year long, Gunner had not played a fourth quarter because even in a game like their semifinal against Canadian, where we thought it might be a game in the fourth quarter, kind of was, but you could tell Gunner was pulling away very quickly into the fourth right. quarter. And so that's, you know, they really hadn't even played a second half much like the Canadian one was really the only one. Tidehaven on the other side had two of their last three games go into overtime. Mm-hmm. They won in overtime to keep advancing to the state championships, including the state semifinal game. Right. So it was like, that's a team that knew how to fight, not even to the end of the clock, but to extra time. Right. And exactly. So it was like, okay, this is a team that is perfectly fine being in this position right now. And then there's a team that we didn't know if they were going to be fine being in that position. And then yeah, Walker Overman turned it on really fun gunner team to watch all year long, but a, a massive credit to Tidehaven because they played gunner better than anyone and has in the first half. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and Carter put out a piece too, not too long ago about how this was probably one of probably if not one, the best gunner team. Yeah. that they have had in the yeah, history there's of, arguments for, of the program. Yeah, there's arguments for, I think, their 2016 yes. or 2019 Yeah, team, team was pretty good, is. too. Yeah. Um, but, no, I I think 
hard stop between that and Cannon Limberg and yeah. just that they're they've got so much talent on that team and it mm-hmm. was it was cool. They're to, fun to watch. Yeah, they were pissed off and we love watching that offense. Yep. Um, but yeah, they came home. They come home with their second straight title. I had program. a. Uh, it was great. There was a tight haven. So w- I was on the set for Bally that day mm-hmm. and we were down on the sideline of AT and T Stadium, real close to the, like one section of the uh-huh. stands. There was a tight haven fan. And most of the time, like, don't just continuously scream at people when they're trying to do their job, you know. Nope. This guy was actually really funny. Like, he did it in a very kind-hearted way. Uh-huh. And um, so I, I looked up at him at one point, and I said, prove me wrong then. Prove me wrong. And he points out, he goes, ah, like he was excited. I finally responded. So if you're going to poke fun at people, do it in a polite way. And then yes. after that, he quit. He just wanted to get my attention. Right, so right. Well, it was, it was actually yeah. pretty funny. Yeah. I, I enjoyed that encounter. There were some encounters I did not enjoy. That no. one I, I did. Yes. The, there's always a couple of those encounters yeah. that you didn't know. But all right, let's move on to Friday of the YL State Championships. And starting off in 4 8 Fish and 1, man, this one was just jarring i mean like we talked about earlier with albany being in full control anna even more so than albany in that game was in absolute full control from start to finish in this game over chapel hill Mm -hmm. this chapel hill offense which i i've been praising all year you've been praising them all year because we they're one they're a texan live school so we watch a lot of chapel hill games demetrius the the smu commits and demetrius (laughs) brisbane and ricky stewart i mean that's their offense, right? Mm-hmm. They did. They are such a good dynamic duo, and they couldn't do anything they against Anna. S- Anna s- shut them. them down. Absolutely shut them down. Yeah, I mean, it was jarring. Is probably I agree with you. That's probably the best way to jarring. put it. Because we we thought too once it got to halftime, and I think Anna was up what twenty one nothing at half. Yeah, um, I think it was twenty four nothing. Twenty four nothing. They, yeah, maybe something like that. I don't know. Um, I thought they got some kind of defensive stuff. I don't know, but we thought that okay, it's only a matter of time until Ricky or Demetrius. Maybe not both of them. It doesn't have to be both of them. It Mm -hmm. would be great if it was both of them. But we were like, at some point, that's got to come online, right? Like the the machine has to turn on. Right. Never did. A huge, huge, huge credit to Anna and how cool for that program and that fan base that's a school that's not a school like shadow creek that's been around for a couple years and they get one and it's like okay awesome you know yeah this is a program that's been around for a long time like a long time and what what coach parr has been able to do Mm -hmm. in his first three seasons in that program has been absolutely impressive 35 and 4 in his first three season at this program um, and they haven't won a district title since 1981. Mm-mm. So what this man has been able to do in three short years, completely turn this program around and win a state championship, obviously for the first time in program history, right. is unbelievably impressive. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. It I, saw was- this, uh, I saw this stat too real quick before we move on. Um, I, I, don't, I think Craven wrote the, the ender or the gamer for mm-hmm. this story and it said, the Coyotes scored more points in the first half, 26. So I guess they, yeah, they scored... I guess, oh, yeah, they, there was no score. There was the no scoring half. in the second That's half. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, then Chapel Hill had yards in that span. They had 19 yards. In. Jeez. So if yeah. that doesn't tell you how dominating this Anna team was, and I don't know. That was kind of crazy because Chapel Hill's defense, I mean, honestly, to hold a high powered offense like Anna's to only 26 right. points, they held them scoreless in the second half. Exactly. It was a fairly decent showing by the Chapel Hill defense. Right. The offense just couldn't, couldn't get, get anything. anything. Going. Right, right. So congratulations to the Coyotes. They bring home their first state title in program history. In 4A Division Two, the Gilmore Buckeyes, how about that, upset the Belleville Bramas 28-26. to And, man, this was probably – would you say this is probably the only upset of um, the week? I don't even know if it would maybe, be considered maybe an Malikoff, upset, honestly. You don't think it would be considered – I think Belleville was at least a 14-point favorite over Gilmer. Really? In the, the computer had him as 14-point favorites. Oh, wow. I didn't realize over Gilmer. that. Yeah. Um, but man, what a showing. I just feel like when you get to this point, nothing's an upset. Like, yeah, that's a good point. I just, <laughs> unless, I have a unless hard time using like, the word upset. Yeah. Right. Unless it's a, an Alito or like yes, a, you that, know. okay. You're correct. If 
Smithson Valley would have beat Alito, that would have been an upset. Yes. But yes. that's because of championship pedigree, not necessarily because Smithson Valley is not a good team. You know? Right, right. I think um, a lot of us picked Belleville to win this game. You picked Gilmer. You were the only one. I sure, yes. Because you got invited I, to the parade. I did, I, I, I or did. something. Those are my Gilmer Buckeyes now. Yes, I, correct. I have claimed a new team. <laughs> um, and I'll tell you the reason I picked Gilmer is that offensively they've been phenomenal this whole year. Mm-hmm. Obviously, questions about the defense came. Could they even stop this high-powered, big Belleville def- or offense, right? Um, I picked them because the past three games that they had played leading up to the state championships were, in our computer, they were underdogs. Mm-hmm. Beat Carthage, which was kind of, to me, I was like, after that, I was like, oh, man, this team probably is going to yeah. win it all. And then they go on to beat Glen Rose, mm-hmm. which is another – crazy team and then of course Belleville so it's like I just I kind of had at that point like I was like they they beat the two honestly I thought Carthage was the best team in 4A division yes. two so they get past them I don't I didn't think anybody was gonna stop them so that was my reasoning behind picking Gilmer over Belleville did did Gilmer yeah they did beat Carthage because Carthage beat Pleasant Grove okay I had to stop and think about that. I was like Carthage beat Pleasant Grove, and then went to play Gilmer, and Gilmer, that's when Gilmer yes. won. Okay, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Um, so I was gr- doing the math in my head. There, I was like, "Hang on." <laughs> yeah, um, but really, really awesome showing by the Gilmer Buckeyes. Um, I was down on the field after this game, and there were a couple coaches that came up to me. And they were like, "Hey, hey, good pick!" And I was like, yeah. "Hey, thanks, go Buckeyes!" <laughs> yeah, I, the thing that I was most impressed with was the Gilmer offensive line. Yeah, because they were going up against a monster in DJ Sanders up front oh, I mean God, we had so we, huge yeah we've talked about it big old number 99 he had 17 sacks on the year yeah well uh, going into the game he had 17 sacks on the year as an interior lineman like that's insane stuff yeah and Caden Tennyson did so good I was genuinely so impressed with him and it's funny because obviously I talked about it on Bally later that day but I said he got to watch his older brother on this stage. Mm -hmm. He has been in this program for a long time. He understands what he's doing. Uh, But yeah, the Gilmer offense just let him have it. I was just really, really, really impressed by the offensive side of the trenches for Gilmer because to hold off a Belleville team like that and allow Caden Tennyson to have enough time to be able to throw the ball down the field was just, it it was really an impressive showing. Right. Well, in a team that we thought were, that was going to struggle defensively against a slot T team, Mm -hmm. um, they held them to the least amount of points they'd scored all season, too. Yep. So, I mean, yeah, overall, great showing by the Gilmer Buckeyes. They are now one of my teams, so I'll be I'll be following them for the rest of forever, yes. I think. <laughs> I think that was the game that some guy commented and said, well, the chick said it was going to be low scoring. And I was like, oh, yeah, it is. It is. That's I low said, scoring for both teams. Gilmer was averaging like 52 <laughs> points know. a game, and Belva uh, was averaging like 45 or something like that. I was like, yeah. I'd say 28 to 26 yeah. is kind of a low scoring right, game. Right. You exactly. Doofus. You, who, they don't know anything. No so people. Dumb. <laughs> they don't know anything. Don't listen to the haters. So dumb. Put your, bl- put your blinders on. And so keep dumb. That was the one that got me. Yeah. I feel that. Oh, I know. I see your face right now. Okay. But anyways, to cap off uh, Friday night, eh, you know, 5A Division One, Alito. <sighs> that was 51. A, a Smith and Valley. What a weird. Eight. What a weird game too. Smith, Smith and Valley went up like eight nothing. <laughs> Well, and here's the thing, too. Those aren't touchdowns. That's a safety because they got a safety, safety first and, and then two, two field, field goals. goals. And one of the field goals looked like a boomerang. Like, it was yeah. going to, like, completely miss. It was the wildest start to a game, and then Alito got online. And yeah. Haas Haney was outstanding. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Haas he Haney was, was pa- uh, Hawk Patrick Daniels was, mm-hmm. too. I think he won offensive MVP in that game. But just, I mean, they're, once their offense got rolling, it took him a little bit, like you said. And I don't remember who I was talking to. It might have been Tepper, but he was like, this – like Smithson Valley was up eight nothing over Alito at this mm-hmm. point in the first quarter, and he was like, "This gives off huge like Carthage Gilmer twenty twenty. Oh, maybe it was yeah. your twenty twenty vibes yep. when Gilmer when went up fourteen nothing and nothing. Carthage rattled off 70, seventy straight, which is exactly what Alito did. They just had to wake up a little bit and be like, "Oh yeah, we're we're here again for the eleventh time." Yeah. So they went there. Uh, eleven. Yeah, this is their eleventh. Uh, yeah, maybe so. I don't know. But this, I know this is their eleventh title in program history. Okay. So. Congrats to the Alito Bearcats. We'll probably be seeing you there again. <laughs> yes. If I had to guess. Which is really impressive. I mean, Robbie Jones takes over that program after, you know, after Coach Buck. And it's like you can still continue to do that, which to me is very, very impressive. So, 
And then to start off yeah, that Saturday. was their 12th. That's what I thought. It was their 12th state championship. Like, they've, oh, won, they've won 12. They've won 12. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Gotcha. I want to make sure that we got that 11, right before it was we 11 had in the, a, a yes. pitchforks coming Correct. for us out of Alito. Yes, it uh, was 11, uh, 11, 12 in the last 15 years. Yes. That's, that's what it was. Correct. And then to close out the weekend on Saturday, it was South Dallas Saturday. 5A Division Two starting off the morning. This was really good game woke us all up uh-huh. port nature's groves takes the cake they get revenge 20 to 17 over south oak cliff and i don't want to take anything away from png i think they played fantastic but the funniest part to me about this game was that south oak cliff's red zone defense was so good they gave the offensive mvp to the kicker png's mm-hmm. kicker <laughs> Which so, deserved it. He set a yeah. uh, he served he set a five A state championship record with four made field goals. Yes, yeah, I know that. That to me that it's very fitting. Yep. Like you know, take it as you will. What got South Oak Cliff, in my opinion, they've got the playmakers all over the field. They have had the playmakers mm-hmm. for years now. It's those dang penalties, man. It's the, those dang penalties that PNG was able to take advantage of. And turn those into points. See, uh, for me, the turning point in the game and the coach, it was the coaching mastermind by Jeff Joseph because they kicked a field goal Mm -hmm. when, so they, first off, they went for, PNG's driving down the field. They get about to the 50 and they go for like the 40, probably the 40. They go for it on fourth down. They convert. Mm -hmm. Three plays later, they convert another first down and then three plays later, they're trying to sit there and go for another fourth down and we're going okay are they going to do that or are they going to kick a field goal they went for the field goal and it was like okay that's weird because that was an even smaller like uh yardage distance than it was the first time and it Uh worked so why aren't you going to go for it again like right keep pushing it you need the points in a low scoring affair like this they went ahead and they opted to kick the field goal and it was like okay and then it was the onside kick the onside kick after the thing that was that that was the difference in the game yeah it was a coaching mastermind to go for the onside kick oddly in like the second or third quarter when no one was expecting it so Mm -hmm. he got three points out of it and then turned around and converted it into seven because they got the onside kick that that right there was the difference of the game yeah just a master master class coaching absolutely i mean you're right jason todd had a great coaching game too uh, yes but it took that one that one decision right there to go for it or to kick the field goal instead of go for it yes it was an unbelievable game i mean absolutely fantastic very very entertaining i mean it got heated too. I mean, like the, you could tell just the passion on the field. Oh, I mean, yeah. like PNG obviously wanted revenge and Sock wanted to go back to back. And it turned out to be a, a fantastic game to start off the Saturday slate. Um, it, it shows how hard it is to win a three-peat. Oh, yeah. Sock's going for it. Franklin was going for, for it. it. You're so right. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. It's Yeah, it's really tough, um, especially when you're paying, playing the same team twice. And yep. Like, you know. And then the middle game on Saturday – wasn't wasn't the best. Six uh, A Division One Duncanville goes back to back with a win over North Shore, forty nine to thirty three. I really felt confident in Duncanville going to this game. I picked Duncanville. You picked Duncanville. I, I just felt like man, this this Duncanville team is, in my opinion, one of the most stacked on both sides of the ball in terms of playmakers that this Duncanville team has ever had. Oh, it was insane. And so many people are going to focus on what Caden Durham did right out of the gate, which obviously Three rightfully touchdowns so. in the first half. I was most impressed with Keelan Russell, the Duncanville oh, absolutely. quarterback, because Caden Durham did exactly what he needed to do. They got a huge lead very early, mm-hmm. and then Keelan Russell just got to have fun in the second half. Man, yep. he was letting that ball sail to DeCorian Moore. It yep. was, it was, it wasn't a great game at all. But man, it was fun to watch. Well, and then to that point too, I think we all knew going into this game that one of the key matchups of this game was, of course, yes, going to be Duncanville's defensive line with Colin Simmons up against. Galena Park North Shore's mm-hmm. offensive line, but I, you, we also talked a lot about um, Duncanville's wide receiver core yep. going up against this really stout North Galena Shore. Park North Shore secondary yep. with seven Devin Sanchez. So that Decorian Moore Devin Sanchez that matchup was fun. was fun, really really fun. Both five stars, both really really good at what they do. That's um, why watching Keelan Russell just drop dimes to him was just impressive. very impressive. I, was yes. like, I know that Decorian Moore can get 
get up and get those, but he is going against Evan Sanchez. So yeah, it was that one. Yeah, that one was fun if you like offense. Yep, absolutely. So it Duncan lasted will- like eight years. I felt it like was it did such. Too. I mean, super high scoring considering you look at the rest of it, and it's like not. Yeah. Bo- that's not both. There's not a game where both teams scored that many points. It was it was a high scoring affair, and it took. So, so long. long. Well, and we had the really scary targeting call at one oh, point. Right. So yeah. there was a kid. I, I there was an athlete that had it, what looked like scary head trauma. Ended up, thank mm-hmm. goodness, not being that. But we had to stop for a long time. Yeah, rightfully so, as they should have to make sure everyone was okay. Right, and I feel like too, both coaches used every single one of their timeouts at one point too yeah. in the first and the second half. So yeah, it was a long game, but it was it was a good one. It's always fun to see Duncanville North Shore. I mean, mm-hmm. just for like the sheer athleticism that both teams possess every single year. And then to, to cap it all off, we get this banger. Man, the this 6A was Division such a two stinker. <laughs> DeSoto, if, 74, Summer Creek, 14. If you're a DeSoto fan, this was the best game of your life. If you yeah. are anybody else, this was just a, a sad way to cap off what was such a great weekend. And again, congratulations to Claude Mathis and DeSoto. It was just boring. It and was. I'm sure Claude is perfectly happy having a very boring oh, yeah. game. That means he won. Exactly. You know, because if it's not boring, you're not, you're not winning, right? Um, yeah. Um, Dude, one thing of note, it was cool to see that both uh, 6A title games was a team out of 11 6A and a team out of 21 6A. Oh, yeah, both that's true. Both ones North Shore and Summer Creek and then Duncanville and DeSoto. Isn't that crazy? That is that is crazy. And then to that point, too, I mean, of course, DeSoto and Duncanville played earlier in the year. I think DeSoto is clearly the best team in Texas yeah. oh, yeah. across Pound all for, classifications. Yeah. That team... I mean, the playmakers that they have now and the playmakers that they have coming back, Mm -hmm. that's a fun team to watch. It's insane. And, yeah, like the the second best team you would say is Duncanville, Duncanville. and they beat them. And they So it's like there is no leaving any sort of doubt that DeSoto would have beat anybody. Now, if you put nine times out of ten, someone might trip them up, but I don't even – I would say I would be shocked if ten times out of ten Duncan or DeSoto wasn't winning. Yeah, no, totally agree. So there you go, all of the UIL State final scores there. Um, what a fun week. It always is a fun week. That is definitely the event that we cover most extensively here at Dave Campbell's Texas Football. We're all doing different jobs. Mm-hmm. You're talking on a microphone. I'm talking on a microphone. People are writing, you're tra- taking video. You're attempting to uh, talk on the microphone. <laughs> sure, yeah. I, uh, Val had some voice uh-huh. issues. <laughs> yeah, you had to step in for me a couple times because I, I emceed. We, we both emceed the mm-hmm. event. Um you did it the first day. I, I did it the following days. Um, and then on the very last day, my voice still is not, it's not great. Um, but well, on the very Mike's last day, go out, so we're doing great over here. You had to step in for me because there was one hit that I did in the second game, the last hit of the second game where you I don't could, think you can understand no, what I was saying. Absolutely. And not. I was trying so hard to yell, which made it even worse. worse. And then, yeah, so you had, so thank you for doing that. Yeah. I really, really appreciate that. I must've yeah. consumed 80 cough drops that week. Yeah. So my stomach hurt for a little bit, but nonetheless, it was a great week. Okay. Uh, <laughs> always love UIL state. Um, we love our friends at the UIL as well. They always put on such a great event for us. 